Hey guys, welcome to Intel vs AMD Season 2 Episode 3 and today we're going back to the year 2001. A1400 AMS 3C is the part number of the fastest AMD Athlon. It is the 1400C with the Thunderbird core running at 1.4 GHz. Looking at Wikipedia, the Athlon 1400C launched in June of 2001. So let's have a look what Intel was up to and we can see that the Pentium 4 1.7 GHz was the fastest Intel processor at the time. Now I didn't receive the 1.7 GHz model in time for this video, so the Athlon 1400C will go up against the Pentium 4 1.4, 1.6 and 1.6 GHz. The top model running at 2 GHz will have to wait for another video. This video is packed with information. We have our usual Windows 98 test system with benchmarks including power draw measurements. We will also talk about power supplies. The Athlon 1400C has a TDP of 72 watts and is a real troublemaker for modern power supplies. So be sure to watch this part. So let's begin the story of the Athlon 1400C by checking out the motherboard. We're using the Asus A7V266-E. It comes with the VIA KT266A Northbridge and I've been using quite a few motherboards with this chipset and so far I'm quite impressed. For video cards we have an AGP Pro 4X interface and all the graphics cards I used so far do run at the full 4X speed. This isn't the case on some of the older VIA chipsets so that's why I'm mentioning it. This motherboard uses DDR memory and we're using a 512 megabyte module from Crucial. The memory timings have been configured to 2225 which are very fast and also went to the device and enabled the 1T command rate. The Northbridge is connected with a 266 megabyte per second bus with the VTA233 Southbridge and the Southbridge connects to various components such as the PCI slots, USB and ATA100 RD ports. And this is the Intel motherboard that we're using for all the Pentium 4 results, not just for this episode, but also for the previous two. It is the Intel desktop board D850MD. In contrast to the traditional North and South bridge, this motherboard uses the Intel hub architecture and here we're looking at the memory controller hub 850. It connects to the AGP4X slot, the processor, but most interesting is the memory it uses. We are using two 256 megabytes of PC800RD memory which have to be installed in pairs and end up running in dual channel configuration. Unlike with standard SD RAM memory, the empty slots need to be filled with CRIM modules, otherwise the system will not work. RDRAM has a very high memory bandwidth, but back in the day it was very expensive. It also consumes more power and runs hotter, requiring heat sinks and it also has higher latency. The rest of the components are used with both systems. We have a 500 watt power supply from Deepcool. The video card is a GeForce 2 GDS with 64 megabyte of video memory. For storage we're using a Promise PCI SATA controller together with a 80 gigabyte Western Digital SATA hard drive and to install Windows we're using a good old IDE optical drive. Okay, let's have a look at the benchmarks. The green bars are AMD, so we've got the Athlon 1000C, 1200C and 1400C and at the top the blue bars are Intel, we've got the Pentium 4, 1.4 GHz, 1.6 and 1.8. The first game is expandable and we can see all the AMD processors are faster than the Pentium 4s. Let's move on to the next game, we've got uh, Draken. We can see a similar trend but the gap is now a lot narrower, however the Athlon 1400C is still the fastest processor in this game. In Quake 2 running in software mode we can see the same picture. The AMD processors are in front. Nothing changes when uh, running in OpenGL mode. Actually the lead increases for AMD. Moving on to Quake 3, this is where the Pentium 4 really shines. It's the only benchmark I believe where the 
uh, Panium 4 1.8 gigahertz is actually able to beat all the Athlons, but that changes again when we're looking at MDK2. All the Athlon processors are way in front. The same is going on with Sirius Sam. Let's have a look at Unreal Tournament. The difference is very narrow, but the Athlon processors do edge out a lead. Let's have a look at power draw results. Just like in the previous episodes, the Intel processors are a lot more energy efficient under idle. And that's quite a difference uh, looking at the top processors. It's a difference from 61 to 102 watts. So that's quite significant. In Quake 2, in software mode under load, the Athlons uh, also pull more power. We're getting 116 watts for the Athlon 1400C. And if we're switching over to OpenGL at 1600 by 1200, so we're putting more load on the video card, the uh, power reading is now 125 watts. So once again, the AMD processors consume more power, but on the flip side, we're also getting higher performance. Now let's talk about power supplies. The socket A system draws most of the current from the five volt rail and old power supplies are built to handle this. For example, this power supply from FSP can deliver 30 amps, which is perfect for such a build. This is the deep cool power supply that I've been using for all the Windows 98 tests. I'll make sure I use the same power supply so that the power measurement results are comparable. It only has 15 amps for the five volt rail, but it didn't have any issues when running all the benchmarks. It was only when I got to the Windows XP testing and I swapped out the video card for a GeForce 3 Ti500, which is a lot more power hungry. At that point, the system wouldn't even turn on, telling us that we have reached the limits of this power supply. So I switched to the old school FSP power supply and at first everything seemed fine. The machine powered up right away. But when inserting a CD into the optical drive, I could hear some strange noises. So I tried another optical drive and it did the exact same thing. So I put my ear close to the system and sure enough, the noise was coming from the power supply. So I had a quick look at what other power supplies I had available and I ended up going with this XFX power supply. This one has a 20 amp rating for the 5 volt rail and this is the one I stuck with for the Windows XP testing. It took all the video cards from the GeForce 3 Ti 500 to the Radeon 9800 Pro and also the X850 Pro. While gaming with the fully decked out Windows XP system, which we will go over shortly, the power meter showed around 130 watts. Okay, now it gets interesting. Windows 98 runs like a dream on such a machine, but what about Windows XP? Right away, I ran into issues with the SATA storage controller. Windows XP would install just fine at first, but after the first reboot, it would just blue screen. Now, it had nothing to do with the missing SATA driver because I slipstreamed uh, one of these SATA driver packs onto the installation disk. So I tried a different controller. This one is from Silicon Image and it gave me the exact same issue. So I knew it was likely something else. And eventually I tried out a few things and I swapped the PCI slot and that fixed the issue. So it must have been a conflict, likely a resource conflict. So if you run into a similar issue, try putting the controller into a different PCI slot. I've made quite a few changes to the system. We are now using a different motherboard from MSI, but with the same KT266A chipset from Wire. I do this mostly because I want to cycle through some of the other motherboards to properly test them. We have upgraded the RAM. We now have two gigabytes for storage. We're now using a fast SSD, and we also installed a USB 2.0 controller to help uh, use an external hard drive. And we've got a sound card. This is the Audigy 2ZS, including a bracket that gives us optical output. So after I figured out the issues with the storage controller, installing Windows XP Service Pack 3 was pretty straightforward. After that, I installed the latest VIA chipset drivers. You can download them directly from the VIA download site. The USB 2.0 controller didn't need any software. The built-in Windows drivers work just fine. And for the sound card, I used the Daniel Case support pack. 
the Athlon doesn't have the SSE instruction set and unfortunately this means that some software simply won't run. For example, Steam is not running and that is probably the biggest issue. But I also had issues with Fraps, so I had to use an older Windows 98 version. And I even got an error when trying to install DirectX 9. So just to see what's going on, I popped in an Athlon XP. And yep, sure enough, all dimension software worked just fine. And now for the fun part, at least this was the part I enjoyed the most. I basically tried out a bunch of video cards and driver versions to get a better feel for what is a good match for a retro gaming PC like this one. So the first video card which I actually used to install Windows XP is the GeForce 3 Ti500. We're using the 9381 drivers from November of 2006. Both Doom 3 and Far Cry, they ran without any issues, but the GeForce 3 is not quite up to the task. We also have 3 d Mark 2001 SE results of around 6,300 points. So I thought about which card could we use next. Now the GeForce 4 is a good candidate, but it doesn't do DirectX 9. And the GeForce FX cards, well, they are a bit of a mixed bag. So we're going straight to a GeForce 6 card, and this is the 6600 GT, a really good all-rounder, and it is available in the AGP version with a Molex power connector at the end. Using the same 9381 drivers that worked well with the GeForce 3, didn't work with the 6600 GT. Far Cry has render errors, and launching Doom 3 even blue screens the machine, followed by a reboot. So I went with some older drivers. We're going with version 7184. These are from March of 2005. And now everything works fine. Doom 3 and Far Cry actually run fairly well. All the games are running at 1024 by 768 with medium details. I also tried Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb. And this game also runs really well on the Athlon 1400C. Now in the last episode we had a look at the Radeon 3650 and found that it didn't run well on the Pentium 4. So this time we are trying out some more period appropriate Radeon cards. First up we've got the Radeon 9800 Pro. This one is modified with one of these aftermarket coolers from China. And we're using Catalyst 4.2 from 2004. All the games are running without any issues, but the performance was behind that of the GeForce. And that isn't a surprise, the 6600 GT is the faster card. Um, I'm trying to put some side-by-side -side footage of Doom 3 with Fraps running, so you get an idea of the performance of those two cards. So I moved on to the next card. This is the X850 XT. And we had to use some newer drivers anyway because the Catalyst 4.2 don't support this card. So I had to go and use the Omega drivers, which are based on Catalyst 5.12. Now the X850 XT is a lot more powerful than the 9800 Pro. And in Doom 3, we can see that it basically performs just as well as the GeForce. Far Cry also runs okay, but both games are clearly CPU limited. Still, compared to the previous systems, these games are now starting to feel a little bit playable and I'm really looking forward to future episodes and seeing how the performance is going to improve. And lastly, I wanted to have a look at the unofficial service pack 4. I have recommended it uh, quite a bit, especially with my newer projects. Uh, it works quite well. But what about a retro gaming PC? where the CPU is already quite limited. And this is what happened after installing the service pack and playing Far Cry. Uh, it lags all over the place, so uh, it's basically unplayable. So it seems that on these older machines with a single core and uh, where we are CPU limited, installing such a service pack might not be the best idea, but there's definitely more testing that needs to be done. But uh, in the meantime, for future tests, I will definitely stick with Windows XP Service Pack 3 for all the tests. And then at the end, I'll install the unofficial Service Pack 4 just to get an idea of uh, a before and after. So guys, there you have it. This was the Athlon 1400C, the fastest Athlon processor and offering fantastic performance, comfortably beating the Intel Pentium 4s and a great Windows 98 retro gaming CPU. 
However, the lack of SSE and the issues with modern power supplies are a real shame, but we're gonna look at some more modern AMD processors very soon, so stay tuned. Also, I feel like we have a better idea now for which video cards to recommend. A GeForce 6 or Radeon X800 series worked really well in this project and what we could do for future episodes is maybe starting to include a few Windows XP gaming benchmarks as well. And that's it for this video guys. Any comments, feedback, questions, leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And I shall see you soon with another one.